My name is Mia Root. I'd like to welcome you all to the FileMaker Higher Education webinar. I am your presenter and host for the day, and I am a business account manager for the Northeast in Canada. I also have with me Rosemary TG from FileMaker. She's the consulting engineer. And I'm happy to say that I have John Gagne from the University of Connecticut, or UConn, who's from the Office of the Registrar. My agenda today is that I'm going to do some housekeeping. I'm going to be talking about some things that you can do during this session. I'm also going to go through a FileMaker overview. I'm going to talk about FileMaker specifically within education. And then I'm going to show you how to create a higher ed solution from scratch. Finally, there will be a Q&A session. The audio broadcast is available through your computer speakers today. We do recommend a broadband connection. Also, if you have any technical issues, you can call the Citrix help desk at the number on your screen. And if you have a question, we will be taking questions at the end. Finally, uh, you can also access this webinar through a GoToMeeting app, which is available for download on the App Store. So how to ask a question, you need to go over to the control panel of the GoToWebinar control panel, click on questions to open up that section, and then just enter your question and send. And Rosemary will be helping with the questions at the end of the seminar. So let's talk a little bit about FileMaker and who we are and our, and our product. FileMaker is a wholly owned subsidiary of Apple. It is also a product which is a database best-selling uh, easy-to-use database software with over 20 million units shipped worldwide. It is also a complete pl platform for rapid development. We've been profitable since the inception of FileMaker and because of that we can put a lot of investment into research and development and we are now in version 12. Finally, the most important message here is that it is easy to create custom solutions for any device, an iPad, an iPhone, Windows, Mac, and the web. The complete database platform includes FileMaker Pro and Pro Advanced, which are for your, our client desktop software. There's also FileMaker Server and Server Advanced if you're going to be having more than five people or have very important data that needs to be backed up on a regular basis, you would also want to have FileMaker Server or Server Advanced. And then if you want to be able to access the database on an iPad, an iPhone, or an iPod Touch, you would do so by downloading the free uh, FileMaker Go app, which is available on the App Store. We also have a global community of, of resources. And we have a FileMaker technical network, which is available um, on our website. It's called FileMaker TechNet. And it's a free community where you can go and get uh, documents and how-to articles uh, on important information about how to create things in FileMaker. It also has a forum where you can post questions and they can be answered by people who are specialists. We also have a FileMaker training series for people who want to learn more about FileMaker and maybe get certified. It's a 13-module um, courseware that allows you to learn all about FileMaker. We do have the official certification testing, so you can become FileMaker certified. We have over 1,100 business consulting companies who have built their business around FileMaker and do development and professional services for FileMaker. And finally, we have specific commercial applications that are available for industry-specific uses and plugins, books, and videos. All of these things are available and accessible on our FileMaker website. FileMaker is platform-proof, meaning that it is available and accessible when you create a solution in FileMaker. It, it's accessible on Windows, Mac, iOS, we also support Windows Terminal Services and Citrix. We also have in, um, extensive integration into MySQL, Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, ODBC, and external databases that are used especially in universities like PeopleSoft and Banner. 
In the mobile space, we're excited to say that we are a great solution for universities. If you look at the spectrum of where FileMaker fits in in the mobile space, to the left you have pre-created apps which are available on the App Store. And if you're able to find one that fits your needs completely, that's a great place to start. It's available immediately and it's typically very cheap. Then you've got on the right side of the spectrum programming tools like uh, Xcode, Objective-C, HTML5. These are specific programming tools that are that that require specific knowledge of how to program in them. And not everyone has that knowledge and never not everyone has the time to learn it or to be able to create solutions. Usually those types of tools are used for enterprise applications. FileMaker fits in the middle because it's a custom uh, iOS development solution and it doesn't require programming knowledge. It's also available either local on the on the device or you can host the solution on a server and access it on your iPad or your iPhone. And it's a great way to move from spreadsheets or paper forms to the iPad. So why is FileMaker used in higher ed? Well, it's a per it's perfect for departmental use where you don't have where IT doesn't have the bandwidth to provide services. So maybe you have a solution you'd like to create and you've gone to your IT department and they just they they are too busy with other enterprise solutions that they have to create and don't have the time to create something for you. The other thing is that enterprise solutions like Banner and PeopleSoft and SAP are are rigid and do require some programming and specialized knowledge which lots of people don't have. FileMaker is built for what we call subject matter experts and probably lots of you that are on the phone today or listening today are subject matter experts. You're working within departments or work groups and you, you are very, very knowledgeable about the work that you have to get done every day. Yet you, have, you did not go to college for you know, programming or computer science. So you need something that allows you to get your job done but not to spend a lot of time doing it. FileMaker is also great because it's a quick learning curve. So this is a, um, a quote from a student program officer at an Ivy League college that um, I cannot mention the name of, but um, this person says, I use the FileMaker, a FileMaker database for our admissions process. I import data from a student information system and I and enter additional information that's either not included or not available or presented um, or not available in the student information system. And then I, I get to have it presented in a user-friendly format. I can then make custom reports so that I can view, uh, so the selection committee can discuss applicants. So what are some of the uh, departments that are using FileMaker in higher ed? Libraries are using it a lot, whether they're taking in information about books or art. Administrative departments are using it for admissions, financial aid, alumni relations, event planning, publishing, marketing and communications, inventory management, research, continuing education, and even tactical data collection where you're just trying to get information about caps and gowns, something that maybe happens once a year. Where else is it used? Well, as I started to poll people from, from different uh, universities and colleges in my territory, these are, were some more things that they said they used it for. Intern management, contact management, uh, applications, grants, research, tracking the fellows, and, uh, and block scheduling. FileMaker Go is, is, is the mobile solution or the iPad solution and it is, um, it's something that's used, being used more and more within higher ed and here are some specific areas that it's being used in. Facilities and building maintenance where people want to do field inspections and audits at the site where the maintenance needs to be done. Admissions and interviewing. This is a really exciting solution that was created by Berkeley College of Music. They are um, doing admissions and auditions across the country, across the world in 83 different countries and they are, they are actually doing this with 7,200 applicants. 
they have six teams of recruiters traveling across the world and they use FileMaker Go on an iPad to collect all the data and have it available to everybody immediately. For registration, Boston University is using a custom FileMaker solution to bring in and collect and manage information and document co uh, collection from international students that come in about 10 times a year. They've managed to uh, take the time to 50% of what it was, 50 percent of what it was originally um, by using an, a FileMaker Go on an iPad. And they take pictures of the passports and of the visas um, and are able to process an applicant or a register, registrant through the process very quickly. Um, it's also used for event management, security with campus police, um, also regulatory compliance where a university medical center in, in Connecticut is using it to assure that their staff comply with HIPAA requirements. They're also using it in the uh, emergency department where they're um, collecting patient data for potential research studies. And finally, um, there's a, the president of a university is using it on his iPad to be able to immediately see what openings or staff openings are available and what committees his staff is, is assigned to. So he can immediately see what staff positions are open and where he can assign people. One of the major areas where FileMaker is used in universities is to extend the student information systems like class rosters, progress towards degrees, academic student advising. Like that quote said, where you're bringing in data from your student information system and then adding to it and creating reports. So what I'd like to do now is um, bring on John Gagney, who is from University of Connecticut. We're very happy to have him here joining us. He's created many solutions, um, and he's going to talk about three of them. Um, and they're a great example of bringing data from elsewhere, and in some cases, student information systems, and adding to it to make the, the users of these systems extremely productive. John? Well, good afternoon, everyone on the East Coast, and good morning in California. Uh, we have a couple of solutions that I'm going to describe. Uh, the first is a uh, non-degree online registration system. Um, at the university, uh, non-degree non, uh, students that are, are not matriculated, students that want to take a class as a non-degree student, uh, have, can't, can't do that themselves uh, in the student record system. They have to make a request that's processed by staff in the Office of the Registrar. So we have an IWP, Instant Web Publishing uh, Solution. IWP is, the file make, is a FileMaker technology that does uh, web uh, facilitates web uh, interaction interface and we don't have a picture of that shown here but uh, the IWP portion of the FileMaker uh, is a series of panels where students go in and they enter their personal information and they enter information associated with the classes that they would like to take. That information is then pushed into a FileMaker Pro database. Now what we see on this screen now are a couple of images uh, that registrar staff would see when they use client software to access that database which is hosted on a server. And on one panel where you see Jane and John, two names listed, you might see a whole collection of names there and you might see uh, people who've just come in, who've made requests, people who've been processed, people who've been registered and you can filter or constrain that list by pressing buttons on the left side of that panel. If you were to click on either name, uh, you then see detailed information for that individual, uh, such as something like what we see in that black box in the lower left part of the display. And uh, they, uh, a staff member has to scrutinize this information. They have to, uh, what they call, vet the individual to make sure they really are who they say they are, make sure all the data is in order, everything seems uh, in, in place and ready to go, and then staff actually attempt to register that student in the PeopleSoft system. And if they successfully register them, uh, a certain email is automatically sent 
to that individual. If they can't register them for some reason, maybe the class is full or something else is wrong, uh, they also go to the email construction window and uh, they, we have several templates of email content uh, that's already predefined and staff members can just click on a button and it'll bring in template inf information or email content associated with the, with the kind of problem that they're having with the attempt. And that, that text all comes into a uh, uh, text box that they can, that they can edit. The, the, the template gives them a starting point, but they can edit that information and add to it and, and modify it if they'd like. And when they press send, an email is automatically sent from the file maker to the student or to the applicant. And that email content is preserved in the program and, and kept for future reference if, des if desired. And all of the changes in status for a student, from, the, for the, from an initial status to a ready to register, to, uh, to vetted, to register, to unable to register, all those statuses are stored in the system with timestamps in the name of the staff member that uh, was performing the work. So our executives can see reports on what was done and when, and they can click a button and obtain a uh, pie chart that shows how many people are registered, how many are not registered, how many are unable to register, and so forth. Uh, if we can see the next slide, please. This slide is associated with a large electronic record keeping system that I wrote for our degree auditing system. Uh, students at the university who want to graduate have to apply to graduate. And uh, on this uh, program takes care of uh, undergraduates and, and a couple of other careers. And uh, a student has to apply to graduate in the student record system in PeopleSoft. And uh, when they do, um, that affects the warehouse data that's stored every night. And during the night while our staff sleep, uh, an ODBC connection uh, updates our FileMaker solution with uh, information associated with applicant, uh, applicants, people who've applied to graduate. And if you just applied that day, you, a new record is created for you, or if you've modified some of your information, you've added a major, you've dropped a major, you've added a minor, you've changed your address and so forth. If your record has changed, uh, your record is red flagged as uh, being one that was modified during the night. So if you look uh, to the upward portion of that, uh, this image, you can see w what is a port, two rows of a portal display. And you can just imagine a screen filled with names. Uh, we don't want to show personal information here, but you know, you'll see alternating blue and white portal rows. And with the with the uh, contact information, and uh, you could filter this list um, any, in almost any way that you could imagine. Uh, she might want to see everyone whose last name starts with A. You might want to see everyone who's applied to graduate this year. You might want to see people from a certain school or program. And you can combine those search criteria in a number of ways. And uh, our staff were even able to save searches and call those uh, searches back up again at another time. And if you click on any one of these portal rows, you see some detailed information for that individual. And that's what you see in the uh, lower portion of this, this display. We, design, we purchased larger monitors for this solution, and we designed the solution around those monitors with the intent all along that the highest priority would be screen real estate space. Staff did not want to click on anything they didn't want to scroll. They wanted to see all the information for an individual. And we're not showing the whole screen here. We're showing a portion of it because uh, it, it is quite large. And uh, they wanted to be able to see all the information for an individual. And so all, all the functionality that's built into this solution uh, is accessed through the custom menu at the top of the screen. And because it's a custom menu, those uh, menu items are whatever we want them to be. You might, you can say, add a plan, uh, change the attention flags, go to email creation, go to letter creation, go back to the bio demo, and so forth. The uh, in this display, there's a lot of 
custom format, uh, I'm sorry, conditional formatting. And what that means is the color of the text changes or the background of a field changes um, if that value goes in and out of a certain range or, or takes on a certain value. Uh, warning staff members about conditions. If your GPA goes into a certain range, the background color changes. Um, if the course is completed, it's green. If it's incomplete, it's red. That's automatic. When you change that status, that color changes. And you'll see uh, CLAS is circled in two portions of that display. Uh, the upper portion is listing what would be the student's uh, uh, program or school. It's indicating where they belong. The lower uh, left circled item is, is referring us to a portion of the screen that changes based on the student's school. So when they're auditing someone for, to see if they're eligible to graduate and they're keeping track of information, staff members see the information in that part of the screen that's associated with that program. If the student was an engineering student, they would see engineering requirements there. If it was a nursing student, they would see nursing requirements there. That changes for the individual uh, based on school. And if you change this uh, individual school, different information would appear in that part of the screen. And other parts of the screen are more universal. Uh, all students, uh, no matter which school they're in, uh, would be uh, 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 containing information that was appropriate in some of the other sections. There's also a note section, and it doesn't look uh, very glamorous uh, down there in the corner with nothing in there. But the staff really, uh, really like that feature. They used to use uh, three-ring binders with different colored pens to keep notes. And if someone called, you had to find the binder and find the page uh, for that individual. And, and uh, now with this hosted on a server uh, and someone calls or comes in, any staff member, whether it's their, uh, someone that's assigned to them or not, uh, any staff member can bring up their records and look at their records and see how they're doing. Uh, see how their degree auditor has placed notes in there, you know, see what's going on. They might work with the student and they might place some notes in there themselves so that everybody can keep track of how that's all going. The, uh, there's some automatic fun functionality built in. If you press audit complete, it automatically sends an email to the student telling them about that. And there, there is a, a, a Another piece of functionality that I'll refer you to that's in the uh, upper custom menu where you see letters. Uh, staff members can, can click on letters and a new window opens up and it allows them to draft a letter for the student. Of course, the student contact information is automatically pulled in and the, and the uh, staff member's signature information is automatically pulled in. And uh, we have custom paragraphs, template paragraphs that have already been created. And uh, staff can just click on buttons and it can just pull paragraphs into the letter and construct the letter. And uh, they are able to edit that text. They can modify it, and, uh, add to it, delete it, and so forth. And when they press uh, print, the letter is printed and uh, you can't uh, modify that text any longer. Uh, after it's been printed, uh, it's saved with a timestamp. Uh, you can uh, duplicate it and you can edit and resend, uh, but the when you press print, it's preserved with uh, it's preserved at that point in time. And if we can see the final slide, please. The uh, there we go. Well, one thing that we're very happy uh, and, and pleased to talk about here at UConn is a lot of the proactive work that we do. Uh, we notify students about problems before those problems occur. Uh, we, if, if students have incomplete grades, we uh, warn them about those grades uh, before they lapse into failures. Uh, several times through the year, we recalculate academic standing, which could change based on grade changes. And we automatically create custom crafted emails for the students uh, that may tell them uh, good about good news or it may warn them about problems that uh, have arisen 
because of the uh, grade change and academic standing change. This particular uh, slide is one that's uh, showing us uh, how we might deal with credit restriction problems. The uh, portion that's in gray to the upper uh, left uh, is an output from a PeopleSoft report that just contains lists of cryptic codes that don't really mean anything to me, uh, not being a degree auditor. Uh, but, you know, when I created the algorithm based on the information they gave me, I created algorithms to interpret these codes in the solution, and you press run and the report is read in, and custom crafted emails are created for each student who might have a, a, a credit restriction problem. And they uh, are told that they may not get credit for a certain class that they're taking, or they may not get full credit for a certain class that they're taking uh, because they're taking it out of order, or they are uh, taking, or they've already taken another class uh, that affects that. And uh, the student receives an email, and the advisor receives an email, and the advising head receives an email. And we warn them about these these problems so that they can correct them during ad drop and uh, take care of this early uh, when, when, when they have a choice and, and not be uh, surprised or ambushed by this when they go to graduate and find out that they're not getting credit in a class that they thought they took. So some of these proactive things are, are, are really nice services that we provide to students. And that's uh, about it on credit restriction. These emails are sent automatically from the file maker. Thank you very much, John. So now that you've seen from John some fully realized FileMaker solutions, I'd like to show you what it takes to uh, create a solution in FileMaker from scratch. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to start with a couple of uh, Excel files. They could be data from external SQL databases, um, but I happen to have some data in in Excel. And you can see that this is um, data about a student, so it has student demographic information, first name, last name, etc. I also have a separate Excel file that's on enrollment. Um, and this has class classes, class titles, instructors, um, it also has a number of units taken, and it happens to have in one column the student ID. So let's close these down. The way I get these into the, the data into FileMaker is very easy. I take the Excel file and I just drag it and drop it onto FileMaker. It immediately recognizes that it's, a it's a, an Excel file and it says, is that first row field names or data? And I tell it it's field names. I give it a name, and it immediately opens a FileMaker database with all of that data in it. Some of the things that I can immediately do are I can sort it, let's say by gender. I could sort it by class term. And notice that it, the data doesn't break, like it potentially could break in Excel where you may just sort one column but not all of the columns together. That will never happen in FileMaker. Now that I've sorted it by student class term, I can then do, let's say I wanted to create a chart and I wanted to show the average, um, the average GPA for students by their class. If I go down to chart, notice it has chart, hold on one second, I'm going to do this again. It has chart by cumulative GPA or chart by cumulative GPA by class term. So automatically, based on how I have the data sorted, FileMaker makes some assumptions of what chart I want to create and saves me a lot of time. So there's the chart. Um, one thing that it did, you may notice, is it, it's giving me a total GPA for each uh, student class. And that's not really what I want. I want it to be an average. So I'm going to go to this section here and change it to average. And now it more uh, it, it better represents the data that I want. It's showing that uh, first term seniors are at about 2.72 GPA. And I can save this as a layout so that I can come back to it at some other point. Um, especially if the data has changed, I can take a look at that data again in a charted format. 
Now let's say I want to uh, create an ad hoc report. I want to take a look and section out all of the people within each class term. So what I'm going to do is use this pull down menu again and I'm going to add a trailing group by student class term. So it puts uh, a line between each student class. And then I'm going to add a trailing subtotal count. So now you can see that it's actually giving me a count for each section. And then finally, I want to create, I want to uh, change that line to be something a little bit prettier so it looks nice. And at this point, I've got this chart. I can, um, I can either print it or I can uh, save it as a PDF file and send it out to people. Just something I can do very, very quickly. Not as quickly done in Excel. But this information, this is good, but I may also want to find some data. So I'm going to click on find and I want to find all of the people who are male, who let's say are in their second year. And immediately I have that information. Or I may want to find everyone that's let's say female and has a cumulative GPA that is greater than two. And there they all are. And if I look up here, I can see that it's 57 meet that criteria out of the 150 records. I'm going to click on show all to see everybody. But you can see how quickly you can get meaning from this data. At this point, I want to create a, a solution that gives me all of the students and what their classes are. Because remember, we have that enrollment data also. I'm going to move to a layout. Now, when I brought in the data, FileMaker automatically created two layouts for me. One is this table view, which looks a lot like Excel. And then there's a second uh, layout, which is more of a, um, a form view, looking at each student separately. So I can go through this little deck here, click on the arrow, and see the different the students. But I want to add to this and make this look a lot prettier. So I'm going to click on Edit Layout. And immediately, I'm going to go to Layouts, Change Theme, because I want to change it to make it a little bit prettier. FileMaker ships with 40 different themes, and I'm going through them right now. And one of my favorites is down at the bottom. Just wanted to show you all of them, but the one that I like the best is River. So that's the one I'm going to choose. And now I'm going to drag this to be a little bit bigger. And let's move the inspector over to the right. And we'll make this a little bit wider. And now I want to I want to have information about the student and I also want to have information about the classes that the student takes. So I since there's so much data, I want to kind of stack it. So I'm going to choose one of the tools called the tab control tool. And all I need to do is drag out a box. When I let go, it says, what do you want the tab names to be? Student info for my first tab and classes for my second. And I like to do full justification on the tabs. Click OK, and there they are. I'm going to move some of this data onto that first tab. And there it is. Let's move the student's first and last name down. And you can see as I move things around, it gives me these dynamic guides which help me position the text and items on the, on the layout easily. So if I want to position this perfectly, it gives me those guides. I can move this over. We're going to delete first name and we'll move this down. There we go. So it's starting to look pretty nice. If I save the layout and I exit the layout, you can see that I can now page through and look at each person. Something else I might want to do is I'm going to go back to Edit Layout. Um, John talked about um, being able to change the color of something based on, um, on what number it is, for instance. I can, do, I can choose conditional formatting. And I can say that I want the GPA, the cumulative GPA, when the value of the cumulative GPA is less than 
two, let's say, I want it to be bold and I want the color to be red because I really want to notice that. The other thing I might want to do is student class term, excuse me, registration status and current are both yes no choices. So instead of having them as a field that has yes, just has the, the letter Y in it, I can actually change those to radio buttons. And I use my inspector to do that. Up here in the top, you can see it says control style and it says edit box, but I have lots of different choices here. Drop down list, pop up menu, checkbox set, radio button set, and drop down calendar when I have dates. Um, I'm going to choose radio button set and I'm going to click on this pencil because I have to give it what the values are going to be. We'll create a new value list. We're going to call it yes slash no and the values are Y and N. And Ro Rosemary likes to talk about common rookie mistakes of people starting with FileMaker. Um, this yes no for a field is something that you might want to use often. And a, a good point here is that you can use the same value list for any field on any layout. So if I ever need the choices yes and no uh, on a radio button set, I can use that pre that, that uh, value list I created. I don't have to create a value list each time I want to do that. I want to make these just a little bit smaller and let's take a look at what it looks like. And there we go. And notice that the cumulative GPA is under two, so it's red and bold, and we've got these nice little check boxes available. Now I'd like to bring in class information. Um, so I need to bring in that data that's in that other Excel file, that, that student enrollment of classes file. Um, this time I'm not going to drag and drop the Excel file onto, um, onto FileMaker because that would create a brand new file. In this case, I want to bring that data into this file. So I'm going to do file import from file and I choose enrollment. Notice that the source fields do not match the target fields because what FileMaker, FileMaker is doing right now is it's pulling, it's taking the enrollment data and trying to throw it into the student, uh, student table. But we know that this is completely different data. So it's not like we're bringing in data for new students. We are bringing in completely separate data. So I'm going to tell FileMaker I want it to make a new file and it's going to automatically call it enrollment. The other thing again I need to tell it is don't import the first record because it contains field names and notice now it matches perfectly. It's looking in the form view but I can switch it over to the to the uh, table view and here's all of the data. Let's go back to layout number one and I can change the names of the layout so that they make more sense. Um, I'm going to go over to classes, but the other thing I need to do is tell FileMaker how the two tables relate to one another. So I'm going to go into an area called File Manage Database. This is an area you will go in often. Let's start over here on the left with tables. There's two tables in this file. One is called Enrollment and one is called Higher Ed because it took on, the table took on the name that I gave the file. But really that table is student data, so I'm going to change it to student or students. Now let's go over to fields and we've got here's the table of students and it shows the field names and field types. We've got enrollment with those field names and field types and we've got relationships which is where I tell FileMaker how these two uh, tables relate to one another. The way they relate is that both of them have student ID in them. So I'm going to click and drag over to student ID, highlighting student ID in the enrollment tab. And when I let go, it brings both of those fields up to the top. So whenever student ID in the student table matches student ID in the enrollment table, those are the classes that this, that student is taking. Let's go over to the classes table and we're going to hit 
click Edit Layout again, and this time we're going to use a tool called the Portal Tool. I'm going to drag a box in here. When I let go, it says, what records do you want to show? Well, I want to show the records in the enrollment table, and I want to have a vertical bar, and I only want to show six rows. And what fields do I want to show? Well, I want units taken, title of the course, and instructor. And I'm going to put units taken last, so I'm going to drag that down and leave it like that and click OK. And because units taken is a s really just one digit, I'm going to make that small. I'm going to move the instructor over and I'm going to make the class title bigger. And now let's take a look at this. Go over to the classes. We need to go to some of the first records because only a few people have their classes in here. But you can see that it filled in what classes each student has. Now to make this more productive, I might want to um, total up the number of units taken for each student. So I need to create a summary field of units taken. Um, I'm going to go into File, Manage, Database, and I'm going to go to the Fields, to Enrollment, and I'm going to add a new field called Total Units Taken. And the type of field that this is, is a summary field. When I click Create, this comes up. And I want it to be a total of units taken. And there it is. Um, while I'm here, I may want to add some other fields. Like let's say I want to create a, um, an email field. So I'm going to go to student. And a lot of you may have emails that are, that are automatic, that are very similar. So it might be first name dot last name at yourschoolname.edu. So let's create one of those. I'm going to create a new field called email. And this is going, the type of field this is, is the calculation. And it brings up the calculation box. And the way to create this is I'm going to start with first name and then ampersand underscore, and I will explain this after I do it, ampersand, last name, at your school name dot edu. And let's see, so how it works is I put in the field name. I always join a field name with an ampersand. Anything that's text is going to be in quotes, ampersand, field name, ampersand, quote with at your school name edu. And I also need to change this, the calculation result to text. And this is a really important thing when you're creating new fields to make sure that whatever you, that you truly want uh, the result to be either text or a number that you would choose the correct thing because that can really affect your sort order. If your sort order is coming out strange, you may want to check what that field calculation result is. Okay, so I did a summary field and I did an email field. Um, let's click OK and go to Edit Layout and let's move that email field popped up here. But I want to move it up here. And the summary is we're going to add, we're going to click on the um, tool called the field control tool. I'm going to draw out a box and I'm going to say I want it to be, I want to find that total units taken field that I created and click OK. There it is. Save layout. Let's take a look at it. You can see the email address is coming out nicely for each person. 
and classes has the total units taken. Now the final thing I want to do is I might want to put pictures in here. A lot of people want to have pictures these days, so um, let's add pictures to this. <clears throat> if I go back here, notice I have the um, enrollment and the, and the student Excel file. I also have a folder called images, and in that folder I have a bunch of images of these students. What's interesting about this is that the name of the file is actually the student ID. So if I can figure out a way to get that student ID and, and get rid of the .jpg um, extension, I can actually automatically have those filter in to the prior location. So let's try that. Again, I'm going to do File, Import Records, but this time I'm going to choose Folder. I'm going to specify that the folder is the images folder. And again, I'm going to tell FileMaker that it's a new, um, new uh, table and click import. Um, I'm going to go into file, manage database. And one thing we're going to do is go to the relationship. Actually, we can't go to the relationships yet. I need to create a new field that takes that file name and gets rid of the .jpg. And the way I do that is we'll call, again, we want to call this student ID. And this is going to be a calculation. And again, that calculation dialog box comes up. And I want to look just at the text functions. And the one I want is called, starts with left and it's actually left words. And what this function does is it takes a string of text and it, take, and it takes what it calls the first word from the left and it, it takes all of those uh, characters up to either a space or a period or um, anything other than a letter or a number. So the text that it's going to look at is the file name and the number of words I want it to grab is just one. We'll click OK and let's go to relationships and we want to match up the student ID from the student table to the student ID from the images table and now you can see that student ID is there. Let's go back to our little higher ed solution and I'm going to go back to edit layout and we're going to add a field. It's going to ask me which field it is. I want the image from the images table. And FileMaker knows which one to give me because it's going to match up the student IDs first. And we'll save it, exit layout, and there we go. We've got nice little pictures of each student in the solution. We've got radio buttons here for yes and no. We've got a nice email address that was automatically created. We've got all of the classes and we have the total units taken. I can then go in and find all of the people that have a cumulative GPA of less than two. There are 34 of them. And then I can go in and create an email specifically for those people telling them that they're in jeopardy of failing. So that is um, the end of my portion of the presentation. Let me bring you back to here. And we are at the point where I'm going to turn it over to Rosemary. We have about 10 minutes left, and we're going to go into the questions and answers. So Rosemary, do you want to start looking at the questions and letting us know the answers? And feel free to start to uh, ask any questions at this time. Rosemary? Yes, sorry, I was having problems getting myself unmuted there. 
Um, so again, if you do want to ask questions, you can go ahead and drop, type them into the questions panel in the, the GoToWebinar control panel. And we have a few questions that have come on in already. Um, the first ask if I can address um, student da data security in FileMaker. Um, FileMaker is a very robust security model. You can get um, very specific um, and based on a login and privilege set, and those logins can be tied into the university's Active Directory system or Open Directory system. Um, you can limit um, specifically which, which users or which um, groups of, of users can see um, specific student data. You can prevent it from being exported, you can prevent it from being printed, um, and you can prevent it from being edited. Um, so you can build a fully regulation compliant system using FileMaker. Um, in addition, you can leverage existing student information systems um, either through sort of the export import um, as Mia demonstrated or you can make a direct connection to student information systems that are based on SQL Server or Oracle and in those cases FileMaker will honor the security that's in that enterprise system. Um, so another question we, we are frequently asked is well, you're using a Mac. What happens if I want to use FileMaker on Windows or use FileMaker in a mixed environment? Um, FileMaker works and produces solutions that look identical on Mac and Windows, and that is always one of the goals as, we're, um, as we are um, continuing to, to develop. And we won't build a feature or we won't add anything to FileMaker unless it displays nicely and works well on both Mac and Windows. Um, another question is, how do you append to a table? Um, so as you, as you saw Mia do, she brought in database, to, she brought in data from a spreadsheet to, to build a system. And from there, you can use import. If you get additional data, with the, the same columns, you can just import that into that first student table um, to continue to add additional records to an existing database. Or you can manually type in new student information if that is the, the appropriate workflow. Um, a couple of questions about you know, FileMaker products and how upgrading works. Um, one is, can you upgrade from using FileMaker Pro to FileMaker Pro Advanced, which is the, the tool used by developers that has those additional features like the script debugger? Um, and yes, there's an upgrade path to FileMaker Pro Advanced, and the best way to, to handle that upgrade is to talk to either the licensing um, software licensing group at your university or reach out to your account manager at our 800 number. And Mia, if you could put up the the contact information slide and, and bring it up. Thank you. So people can see those phone numbers. Um, and also questions about FileMaker Server. We do recommend that uh, customers who have mission critical data or who are sharing with more than a handful of users do use FileMaker Server um, because it allows for things like automatic backup. And we always have um, competitive, very good pricing on servers. And many of our, of our university customers also do hosting on FileMaker server so that users in departments do not need to spin up their own server. They can have their databases hosted in the IT's central data center with backup and um, backup power and other redundancies as needed. Um, another question is, does FileMaker support using barcode scanning? Um, yes, FileMaker does work with barcode scanners. Um, you can either use, um, if you want to use a laptop and a Bluetooth or other, or USB barcode scanner, um, FileMaker and the computer treat those as just another keyboard input. So you can put the cursor into a field and scan something with the barcode and then have FileMaker perform an action like creating a new record or looking up that, that um, ID number or um, 
asset tag in the database so that then the user can do additional work with that. In addition, using FileMaker Go on the iPad or iPhone or iPod Touch, um, you can use um, the camera, either the built-in camera for FileMaker or a Bluetooth device that does barcode scanning and an, a helper utility to translate the barcode into text that FileMaker will understand. And, you know, there's specific questions about um, what, what is the best barcode scanning hardware. I mean, that's unfortunately something, as we don't do professional services, that we can't specifically recommend. Um, you probably want to reach out to your, your um, salesperson to ask more specific questions about barcode scanning. Um, another question is, does FileMaker work with VMware? Um, Yes, FileMaker server performs very well in a virtualized environment, provided that the virtual machine has sufficient resources to run FileMaker server. And by sufficient resources, I mean enough, you know, a, a wide enough share of the network card, sufficient RAM, um, recommended eight gigabytes of RAM dedicated to that virtual machine, and sufficient hard drive space to both support the operating system and um, any hosted FileMaker databases. Um, most of our universities who host FileMaker in their data center are doing it in a virtual environment. Um, other question is, is there a record limitation for the amount of data that FileMaker can store? Um, FileMaker has no fixed record limit. A FileMaker database can be, in theory, up to 20 terabytes large. Um, so really the limitation is the amount of space that is dedicated to FileMaker server or however much storage you have for that database. Um, final question is, is there a recording available for viewing later on? Um, and yes, we will send you an email after the session to where the final recording is located in a few days. And on the resource slide Mia has posted is a link to many of our other web seminars that we have recorded in the past several months. So with that, I'm going to hand it back to Mia. Thank you, Rosemary. That was great. And also to John Gagney from UConn for um, talking to us about the solutions at UConn that he's created. Um, we are happy to take any questions about um, what you've seen today or any other questions about FileMaker. Feel free to call that uh, telephone number on your screen to get more information. Um, also an important note is that we have volume licensing available and most universities and colleges already are under the volume licensing program. So your sales rep will know about that and can give you more information about pricing. So with that, I would like to thank all of you on the line that have um, spent the last hour with us. I really appreciate it um, and uh, have a great afternoon.